Hello, everyone, and welcome to Read Along with Grandma Sherry. I hope you are doing well today. The story we will be reading is written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. It is called, I Had Trouble in Getting to Sala Salu. I was real happy and carefree and young, and I lived in a place called the Vale of Vung, and nothing, not anything ever went wrong until... Well, one day, I was walking along, and I guess I got careless. I guess I got gawking at daisies and not looking where I was walking. And that's how it started. Suck! What a shock! I stubbed my big toe on a very hard rock, and I flew through the air, and I went for a sail, and I sprained the main bone in the tip of my tail. Now, I never had ever had troubles before, So I said to myself, I don't want any more. If I watch out for rocks with my eyes straight ahead, I'll keep out of trouble forever, I said. But watching ahead, well, it just didn't work. I was watching those rocks. Then I felt a hard jerk. A very fresh, green-headed Quilligan quail sneaked up from in back and went after my tail. And I learned there are troubles of more than one kind. Some come from ahead, and some come from behind. So I said to myself, now I'll just have to start to be twice as careful and be twice as smart. I'll watch out for trouble in front and back sections by aiming my eyeballs in different directions. I found this to be quite a difficult stunt, but now I was safe, both in back and in front. Then new troubles came from above and below. A skits at my neck and a skrink at my toe, and now I was really in trouble, you know. The rocks and the quail and the skrits and the skrink, I had so many troubles I just couldn't think. There I was, all completely surrounded by trouble, when a chap rumbled by in a one-wheeler wobble. Young fellow, he said, what has happened to you has happened to me and to other folks too. So I'll tell you what I have decided to do. I am off to the city of Sala Salu on the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. It is not very far and my camel is strong. He'll get us there fast. So hop on, come along. I jumped up behind him, Then all through that day, the wubble wubbed on in a wubblesome way. The road got more bumpy, more rocky, more tricky. By midnight, I tell you, my stomach felt icky. And so I said, Mister, please, when do we get to that wonderful town? Aren't we almost there yet? Young fellow, he said, don't start into stew. At sunrise, we'll drive into Sala Salu, and you'll have no more troubles. I promise, I do. But when dawn finally came and the darkness got light, that wonderful city was nowhere in sight. Instead of the city, we ran into trouble. Our camel got sick and he started to bubble. We had to pull him in the one-wheeler wobble. So there, there we were in a dreadful position. Our camel sure needed a camel physician. Now, doctors for camels are not often seen, especially on mountains. They're far, far between. But we pulled that old wobble and set out to find some doctor while dragging our camel behind. I pulled, pulled, and pulled. Then the next thing I knew, I was pulling the camel and wobble chap too. Now really, I thought, this is rather unfair. But he said, don't you stew, I am doing my share. This is called teamwork. I furnish the brains. You furnish the muscles, the aches, and the pains. I'll pick the best roads, tell you just where to go, and we'll find a good doctor more quickly, you know. Then he sat, and he worked with his brain and his tongue, and he bossed me around just because I was young. He told me go left, then he told me go right, and that's what he told me all day and all night. Next morning, we located Dr. Sam Snell, who knew all about tonsils and camels as well. Our camel, he said, had a bad case of gleeks and should lie flat in bed for at least 20 weeks. 
I was tired. How I wanted to crawl in that bed. But the wobble chap sent me away, and he said, Your troubles are practically all at an end. Just run down the hill and round the next bend, and you'll come to the Happy Way bus route, my friend. The Happy Way bus leaves at 442 and will take you directly to Sala Salu, on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where they never have troubles. At least, very few. Well, the bus stop was there. And that part was just fine, but tacked on a stick was a very small sign saying, Notice to passengers using our line. We are sorry to say that our driver, Butch Myers, ran over four nails and has punctured all tires. So until further notice, the 442 cannot possibly take you to Sala Salu. But I wish you a most pleasant journey by feet. Signed, Bus Line President Horace P. Sweet. So I went on by feet, thanks to Horace P. Sweet. And that Horace P. Sweet almost ruined my feet. A hundred miles later, my feet were so sore. Then, wouldn't you know it, it started to pour. I was drenched to the skin when a chap in a slicker splashed up and he yelled, It's the midwinter jicker! The midwinter jicker came early this year, and it's not going to be very comfy around here. Any fool would get out, so I've packed up my things and I'm off to my granddaddy's out in Palm Springs. Take cover, he yelled. Use my house if you wish. Then the chap in the slicker splashed off like a fish. I ran in the house and I fell in a heap. I needed my rest, but I just couldn't sleep. Did you ever sleep when your feet were like ice with a family of owls and a family of mice? I listened all night to the growls and the yowls and the chattering teeth of those mice and those owls while the midwinter jicker howled horrible howls. I tossed and I flipped and I flopped and I flept. It was quarter past five when I finally slept. Then I dreamed I was sleeping on billowy billows of soft silk and satin marshmallow stuffed pillows. I dreamed I was sleeping in Sala Salu on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. Then I woke up, and it just wasn't true. I was crashing downhill in a flubulous flood, with suds in my eyes, my mouth full of mud, and my nose full of water, my ears full of shrieks of the owls flying off with the mice on their beaks. And I said to myself, now I really don't see why troubles like this have to happen to me. I floated twelve days without toothpaste or soap. I practically almost had given up hope. When someone up high shouted, here, catch the rope. Then I knew that my troubles had come to an end, and I climbed up the rope calling, Thank you, my friend. I got to the top, but it wasn't a friend, and I saw that my troubles were not at an end. A big man on a horse scared me out of my wits. He bellowed, I'm General Genghis Khan Schmitz. There's a war going on, and it's time that you knew every lad in this land has his duty to do. We're marching to battle. We need you, my boy. We're about to attack. We're about to destroy the perilous poozer of Pomplemousse Pass. So get into line. You're a private first class. He gave me a shooter and one little bean, which is not very much if you see what I mean. Then he yelled, Get that poozer! Attack without fear! The glorious moment of victory is near! And the glorious general led the advance with a glorious swish of his sword and his lance and a glorious clank of his tin-plated pants. Then we went round the corner and found that, alas, there was more than one poozer in Pumplemousse Pass. And Genghis Khan Schmitz shouted out to his men, This happens in every war now and again. Sometimes you are winners. Sometimes you are losers. We never can win against so many poosers, so I suggest that it's time to retreat. And the army raced off on its tin-plated feet. There I was, with more poosers than I'd ever seen. There I was, with my shooter, and only one bean. There I was, and I thought, will I ever get through to the wonderful city of Sala Salu, on the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few? 
I had terrible trouble in staying alive. Then I saw an old pipe that said, Vent number five. I didn't have time to find out what that meant, but the vent had a hole, and the hole's where I went. Well, that vent where I went was a sort of a funnel that led me down into a frightful black tunnel. The traffic down there was a mess, I must say, with billions of birds going all the wrong way. They bumped me with bikes, and they banged me with dishes. I ran into ladders, beds, bottles, and fishes. I skidded on garbage. I fell in a horn. Troubles! I wished I had never been born. I was down there three days in that bird-filled-up place. At least 8,000 times I fell smack on my face. I injured three fingers, both thumbs, and both lips. My shin bone, my backbone, my wishbone, and hips. What's more, I was starved. I had nothing to eat. And damp, was it damp? I grew moss on my feet. Then, just when I thought I could stand it no more, by chance I discovered a tiny trap door. I popped my head out. The great sky was sky blue, and I knew from the flowers I'd finally come through to the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo. I couldn't be far now from Sala Salu. There it was, with its glittering towers in the air. I made it. I'd done it. At last I was there, and I knew that I'd left all my troubles behind when a chap at the door that shimmered and shined waved me a wave that was friendly and kind. Welcome, he said as he gave me his hand. Welcome, my son, to this beautiful land. Welcome to sweet, sunny Sala Salu, where we never have troubles, at least very few. As a matter of fact, we have only just one. Imagine, just one little trouble, my son. And this one little trouble, as you will now see, is this one little trouble I have with this key. There is only one door into Sala Salu, and we have a key slapping slippered. We do. This troublesome slippered moved into my door two weeks ago Tuesday, at quarter to four. Since then, I can't open this door anymore. And I can't kill the slippered. It's very bad luck to kill any slippered. And that's why we're stuck, and why no one gets in and the town's gone to pot. It's a terrible state of affairs, is it not? And so, said the doorman of Salasalu, my job at the door here is finished. I'm through, and I tell you what I have decided to do. I'm leaving, he said, leaving Salasalu on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where we never have troubles, at least very few, and I'm off to the city of Bulabubal, on the banks of the beautiful River Wuwal, where they never have troubles, no troubles at all. Come along with me, he said as he ran, and you'll never have any more troubles, young man. I'd have no more troubles. That's what the man said. So I started to go, but I didn't. Instead, I did some quick thinking inside of my head. Then I started back home to the Valley of Vung. I know I'll have troubles. I'll maybe get stung. I'll always have troubles. I'll maybe get bit by that green-headed quail on the place where I sit, but I've brought a big bat. I'm all ready, you see. Now my troubles are going to have troubles with me. And that brings us to the end of I Had Trouble in Getting to Sala Salu, written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. I hope you enjoyed reading that story with me. It was a longer one of Dr. Seuss's stories, but it was interesting, don't you think? So I hope you have a very wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.